Hi, in this video I'm going to just uh, show you uh, the voltage measurement from this generator. Now this generator was uh, faulty, I sent it in for repair, but it came back just like this. So um, what I'm going to demonstrate is a common problem, not only on this particular generator and other brands too, but this is the behavior of this generator, which seems like it's fine, but it's definitely not fine. Now yeah, you can see this happens to be a 220 volt, a 230 volt generator. Obviously in other countries, maybe it will be 110, but nevertheless, the principle is the same. You see when I load the generator, it is maintaining a fair voltage. You see the voltage is there, 200. It still was in the 200 range, but the frequency dropped considerably. So now I'm going to show it to you in a little bit more detail uh, a little bit later in this video. But I'm trying to bring it to your attention to show you that the frequency of the voltage of the current uh, is very important in terms of your appliances. There you can see it's 46, 47 hertz. That's a little bit lower than it should be. It is um, deviating and then coming back. It's going 47, 48. That is quite normal of the budget generators. And that's... Uh, probably within uh, acceptable uh, limits for a lot of appliances but now look at that waveform you can see there's a lot of noise on it but it's still acceptable it's not going to do too much damage to your appliances but if you have a look and you see how this thing is dropping down look it's 230 and it suddenly went to 190 and it was 230 to 190 it might do it uh, again here and that, that's what we're looking at we're looking at the voltage there's the 220 something and then the frequency the 48 the 47 now what happens is as i load this generator look i'm switching on the kettle now look at that frequency and look at the voltage 190 and can you see how it fluctuates 194 195 and look at that frequency 33 now 33 is just not going to cut it for your appliances you're going to find that they're going to uh, degrade and uh, a lot of people won't know this because the generator still sounds the same. So here in this case, you're supposed to be getting between 220, 235, and the frequency maybe um, will be acceptable, say 47 to about 51, 52. And what happens is as I load up the generator by putting this kettle on, and this kettle is uh, is about 1.8 kilowatts, and that generator can definitely handle it, um, you can see the voltage drop. Look at that 190 volts is definitely too low, and look at the frequency 33.27. So that is a problem. Now here's the issue. The issue is, is that this generator came back from the uh, supplier as a fixed generator. And for all intents and purposes, when you listen to it, it seems fine. Look, it did boil the water on the kettle. But when you map it out, you can see that this generator is still faulty. Now, most people would not know this because they don't have an oscilloscope to test this. So just make sure that when you, if you have a generator, that you actually take an oscilloscope and test it because you run the risk of damaging your appliances and also the generator. I'm just going to explain a few concepts which may make it clearer when you're uh, watching this video if you have a look at the frequency now all uh, sinusoidal waveforms have to have a frequency so the voltage coming out of the plug or your uh, supply in your country has a certain frequency so here in this country we use 50 hertz so you can see that's the blue wave and you can see that the wave is finished one complete cycle after 20 milliseconds now you can see 60 hertz is slightly more rapid you can see the uh, sine wave is actually at a higher rate so your country maybe it uses 60 hertz or maybe it uses 50 hertz the point is is that you if your device is designed for 50 hertz you've got to give it 50 hertz a lot of uh, new technology especially electronics chargers cell phone chargers battery chargers for your laptops and that can deal with both because they've got switch mode power supplies which can handle fluctuations but other devices cannot if they're de designed for 50 hertz you've got to give it 50 hertz and that's why it's important to make sure that the general generator sticks to that frequency and I'll show you shortly what I'm talking about. Now just having a look at how we talk about voltage can you see that the peak of the crest or the peak of the trough is called the peak voltage so that is the peak voltage usually when we specify voltage we talk about the root mean square value which is RMS and there you can see so in your country maybe it's 220 volts or in the, in the country that I'm in in South Africa we call it 230 volts so the RMS value is sitting over here. Now, uh, from your plug, when they say, oh, it's a 220-volt socket or it's a 230-volt socket, or maybe in the United States, 110, um, they're talking about the RMS voltage, not the peak voltage. So when you see on my oscilloscope, you'll see that it's actually RMS value. And then the last thing I just want to bring to attention is the curvature of the wave. Can you see that it follows this sinusoidal shape? 
And that is also very important because what often happens when you load up the generator, it often becomes a cockeye waveform. It becomes like a sawtooth or a triangular wave, or it's got a lot of noise, or it becomes top heavy or bottom heavy. And that's also a problem. You see here, whatever's on the top is matched on the bottom. So when you're charging a transformer, for example, that is a device that uh, converts uh, the voltages for us, whatever you put into the transformer you must take out so that you don't get any unnecessary heating so if you look here what's on the top of the line is matched with what's on the bottom of the line and a lot of these generators when they go uh, under heavy load you'll find that they don't do this they are unable to uh, follow this exact sinusoidal waveform and that's what separates the cheapies from the accurate generators. All right, let's carry on. So now that you've got that background, can you see what I'm talking about? There's a very dirty waveform looking not quite sinusoidal, almost like triangular, but the voltage and the frequency are quite close to the goals of, in this country, 230 and 50 hertz. But now look, when I load the generator, look at that 190, look at that waveform, the top and the bottom don't match, and that frequency is way out of the specification, and this generator should no longer be used. And I've used the term dirty power. Um, what that means is that there's a lot of noise on the signal. So if you look at the waveform at the bottom, you can see that there's a lot of noise uh, oscillation or harmonics on that sinusoidal wave. If you look at the wave on the top, it's just a clean line. So that's what we mean by clean power means there's no noise on the wave. Now, I use the generator to feed straight into a UPS, and shortly you'll see my setup. So the generator feeds into this changeover switch, and then the uh, changeover switch goes into a DB board, and then into a UPS. Now, the UPS, some people use it to clean the power. What it does is it's got a double conversion. It's basically an H-bridge that converts the uh, AC into DC and then back into AC. Now, if that doesn't make any sense, don't worry. What I'm trying to show you is that if your UPS is not accepting your generator signal it's telling you it's really bad because usually a UPS is very tolerant of a poor signal so I'm going to now show you the uh, UPS and you're going to see how it goes online offline or it goes to bypass line bypass line it's meaning that the signal coming in from this generator is are so poor that it will not accept it so yeah the generator is connected to the UPS sorry I apologize for the camera shake and look what the UPS is saying it's going bypass which means that it will not accept the generator. Now it's uh, clicking over. You can actually hear it clicking. There, you heard the click. It tries to uh, go online and use the generator to feed it, but then it's going back to batteries. While it's doing this, the signal is too poor. Right, so now I've got a different uh, generator here, one that is actually working. This is actually s slightly smaller in capacity. Uh, this is one I bought from Adendorf. And um, here I'm doing the exact same test and you can see there's the voltage 225 and there's the same kettle and now I'm going to load it up by switching that kettle on and let's see what happens. Now this generator has no fault so it's supposed to do it correctly. Okay so currently this is the output of the generator with no load 225 somewhere there and it's, this is actually above the 50 hertz you see it was 52 and then when I loaded it it went to 47 but it did not do what the Roby one did the Roby one did you see it went to 35 and that waveform went uh, very 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 uh, d distorted whereas if you look here this is not a great waveform uh, it's definitely not sinusoidal but it is better than the uh, Roby in terms of under low conditions. So this is a generator, it's also a cheapy generator, and it's still not gonna give you that complete, uh, perfect sinusoidal waveform, but this is a generator which is probably, I would say, within its spec. I don't think it's gonna be able to do much better than this, and that with a 1.8 kilowatt uh, kettle. So there you can see, and if you can hear the generator change, it's working very hard. you can see the voltage it maintains it it did not drop to that 190 uh, voltage it maintained the voltage and it's keeping the frequency uh, it should be at 50 but again as I said a lot of these generators are unable to keep it exactly the correct amount with right so now I've connected this generator to the UPS and let's see what it does it's going to kick in right now oh look at that so it's kicked into the UPS it's feeding the UPS the UPS look at that um, gen that waveform there what a mess uh, but it will probably correct soon as uh, it tries to uh, improve itself and there you can see the voltage fluctuated from about 240 something now down to 218. 218 is acceptable and look at that waveform 
Um, did you see it drop there, 180 something, but it came back up. It's very important that it comes back up. And how it comes back up, just remember that this is a, the generator is a mechanical device. It has to increase the revs. So what's happening there is it's a mechanical device and it's got an accelerator and has to almost like work harder, burn more petrol, and then uh, it'll increase the current and therefore it'll increase the voltage. So you, what's important here is that can you see the voltage is around the, the 220 mark, but most important, as, a, as I said, is the frequency. You see now this generator is under load, but that frequency is staying within the right range. The generator feeds the changeover switch, then it goes into a little mini board here, and then it feeds the UPS. And there you can see the UPS is showing that it's about between 215 and 220 volts, even under fair load. And there the frequency uh, is about 48 hertz. 48 hertz for a UPS is not a problem. The UPS will clean the power. Uh, what I mean by cleaning the power is, as you can see, coming into the UPS is 220, but coming out 229. I can set that. So if you give me a, a poor signal of uh, 199 volts, my UPS will then convert it and make it still whatever you want, 229 or 230. Um, and you can also do that with the frequency, although it will reduce the efficiency of the UPS. Okay, so in closing, what's the takeaway here? The first thing is generators, generally the entry level ones do not give you pure sound waves and you'll find that there's sometimes quite a lot of harmonic content on the waveform as you can see in this picture. Look at all that uh, squiggly or scribbled lines on top of that uh, waveform. All right, the next thing is the frequency. The frequency must stay within a certain range. A generator comes with a specification and if it's a 50 hertz generator, it should definitely not go beyond 45 hertz or 55 hertz. It, ideally, if it could be within one or two hertz and then if it's a 60 hertz the same thing applies but you can see here 36 hertz is just out of the range completely the next thing is the voltage fluctuations yes it is common that when you load up the generator the voltage will dip but then the uh, motor well the, the the engine should speed up and then it should correct itself while the load uh, on your in your home or your office is changing so the most important thing is that uh, it gives you a stable output and that the voltage comes back to within the range it should not stay at like 170 volts uh, with a poor frequency or even 170 volts is actually going to be too low if it's supposed to give you 230 volts. So here you can see a few things to do with generators. And the last thing is that even though the generator is repaired, whether or not the uh, uh, electricians or the mechanics at the uh, repair center test it under load is another question. Uh, you would have to actually map it out yourself and see how does this generator behave when it's loaded. Because as I've shown you now, um, two generators, both seemingly working, but look at the difference of the characteristic under load obviously you cannot or you should not uh, connect your appliances to a generator that is deviating that much when it is loaded remember that was the roby in the beginning going 33 whatever 35 hertz uh, and dropping the voltage too much all right so i hope that was helpful and thanks for watching